Now, the divergence is when you take the dot product of the del operator to a vector quantity. Let's call that V. So let's say your V quantity or your vector quantity has three components in the Cartesian coordinate system. Vx, x hat, Vy, y hat, and Vz, z hat. Oh, by the way, in this class uh, and in the book that we're going to use, the unit vectors in the Cartesian coordinate systems are represented by x hat, y hat, z hat. Okay, so we are going to use this notation, this term, okay, for in order for us to be consistent with your book. Now, the divergence of vector v, when you apply this operation to your vector field, the result would be the derivative of the x component of your vector field with respect to x plus the derivative of the y component with respect to y plus the derivative of your z component with respect to z. Here we assume that vx is a function of x, y, and z. Vy is also a function of x, y, and z. And vz is also a function of x, y, and z. Now, if we're going to use a different set of coordinate system, let's say a uh, spherical coordinate system or cylindrical coordinate system, the, uh, the corresponding changes in the representation will follow. And of course, this divert this equation will, will look different when we deal with a different or curvilinear coordinate system. Now, you will notice here that the resulting function is a scalar function. And what is the interpretation of the divergence? So the divergence of a vector field V is a measure of how much V spreads out from a point of question. So for example, So let's say, for example, we have at this point. Okay, so let's say we have that point. And then let's say we uh, uh, around this point, uh, the this vector V is represented by this. vector field. So we say vector field, it is a field of vectors. Okay. So that means at any point around this point or any region or any location around this point, we can associate it, we can associate a certain vector. Okay, so let me just complete the figure to give you a more concrete idea. Okay, and then last four. This one. This one. This one. And this one. Okay. Now, of course, I'm not going to uh, compute for the divergence, but in, what's important here is that if if you're going to plot a, uh, of, if you're going to plot our vector field B, and say you will be able you you found out that the vector looks like this. Okay, now if we choose a certain region, for example, this region. 
this region that encloses this point. Okay? When you say divergence, as I mentioned before, it is a measure of how much of your vector field spreads out from a point of question. So in this case, okay, if we're going to count the number of uh, the number of vectors that goes out and in in this region within this region, okay, that will determine the divergence. So for example, here, this most of uh, all of the vectors here are going out okay, with respect to this region. So that means within this region, you have a positive you have a po you have a positive divergence. Okay, if this if this vector fields point in the opposite direction, so that means within this region, all the vector fields point toward uh, it, uh, going inside. Okay, so that means there are ve the, the net effect or the net vector, so to speak, going in and out of this region is inward. So the divergence of that is negative. Now, physically, if you have it within a region, you have a positive divergence. That means inside that region, you have a source. So in this case, this point looks like a source of this vector field. Okay, this will make more sense when we discuss, uh, when, you, when you learn about the, when you apply this in electric fields, okay? Now, if the divergence within the region is negative, that means the vectors go inside. So that means it has a sink. So again, if there is, if there's a, if, uh, uh, if there is a, uh, if the divergence within a region is positive, there is some kind of a source. So that is the source of your vector field. If, for example, we have a negative divergence, that means you have a sink. So you say sink, okay, your vector goes in. Example of which is if you have a positive source, if you have a positive divergence, so that means you have a source. If you have a negative divergence, you have a sink. Okay. Now, for example, you have a vector field like this. Okay, so for example, we have a vector field like this. So if we take, for example, this region, okay, and you're going to analyze the vector field here, you can see that there are equal vector, equal number of vectors going in this region and going out of this region. This exam, this is an example of a zero divergence. Okay, that's why it's called divergence. It should diverge off if you have a source, or it could diverge into if you have a sink. If your vector field is like this, so this is a constant magnet, uh, constant vector field. If it, so that means there is no, there are no changes in the x, y, and z. That means there is zero divergence. Okay. 
Now, if for example, sorry, okay, for example, we have uh, like this. We can we have a We have a vector field that is. We have a vector field like this. OK, now they all point in the same direction. However, if you're going to look at this region of space. OK, uh, the vector going in are small than the, than the vector field going out. OK, so there are the, the magnitude of the vector going out. Is larger than the magnitude of the vector going in. So in this case, we have a. Positive. Divergence. OK, so that's the geometric interpretation of your divergence. OK, 